All right, welcome to Right On with John Crane. And today I am back in the tool bag here, and I'm going to be taking a closer look at different kinds of electrical testers. Now, it's a great thing to have in your tool bag here, and it's often uh, sometimes a little bit of a mysterious thing. Uh, people often ask me about testing electric and different ways of doing it and just understanding it. So uh, I'm gonna be covering a whole gamut of different types of electrical testers from uh, voltage testers to amp clamps to uh, light sticks here, multimeters. And uh, I'm gonna be showing you various ways of uh, how to use these testers. So uh, yeah, let's dive in and we'll take a closer look. All right, electrical testers can be kind of a, a big topic and there are so many different kinds of testers out there on the market and different people using different ones. But uh, this is the collection here that I have and that I use in my shop or I have in my tool bag. And it doesn't seem to be that there's a one tester that does it all or nor do you want one tester that does it all as I found. Uh, it seems to be uh, to have a variety of different testers. So I feel it's great to have a, a multimeter here, but at the same time, you're gonna want an amp clamp, and then uh, these little light sticks are great as well. So I'm just gonna give a, uh, a general overview on these testers and uh, just their various uses. And so uh, let's start by taking a look at this multimeter here. And then uh, I'll kind of go through each tester uh, one by one and show you the different features that it has. All right, what I've done here is I've uh, set up a little board here uh, to show you some of the various features here of the different testers. So I put a little uh, panel right here, uh, receptacle, a couple light bulbs, that type of thing. And I can show you how these testers uh, work on this board here. So if we look, at this multimeter, and this is uh, pretty typical for a uh, multimeter, right? All these features on here. So let's start right here. And you can see this symbol right here, uh, V with a squiggly line there. That is uh, volts AC, right? And if you look at this one up here, volts with a straight line, right? That's volts DC. So you can kind of think of this as uh, volts AC, Nikola Tesla, and uh, volts DC, uh, Thomas Edison there, right? Those two guys were going uh, head to head on that for a long time, and Tesla's idea ultimately won out with the, uh, the volts AC there. So if you look at the volts AC section here, right, you got uh, some different numbers to choose from, 2, 20, 200, 700, right? And uh, depending on what voltage you're measuring, right? You wanna set it to that and you can get various degrees, you know, of the voltage showing up here on this meter. So if we're measuring uh, 120 volts, you know, obviously we're gonna want it on the 200, you know, we're measuring above that 240, we wanna put it on the 700 there, right? So let's uh, let's take a look at this panel right here. All right, what I've got set up here is just kind of a typical panel that you would see in a residential situation, right? Uh, just on a small scale here. And this is a 120 volt, 240 volt panel here. So what we got coming in here is we got one hot leg coming in here. This would be kind of your service wire coming in. And this is uh, 120 volts here. Uh, coming into this lug. And then on the other side, right, we got 120 volts uh, coming in there. And then those feed right here through your breakers, right? This is your uh, overcurrent protection devices here uh, with the power traveling out right here out to your various circuits. And then right here in this section here is our neutral bar. And uh, this is kind of an old school panel here where this is a neutral bar and it is also has the uh, ground wire tied in there as well. So it's neutral and grounds uh, together there. So I'll put this multimeter up right here and uh, we'll take a measurement. And so if you want to measure this hot wire coming in right here, uh, 
you put your uh, black lead, it could be either one, but you put your black lead here on the neutral bar and then come right over here and uh, test this hot wire, this phase coming in. And as you can see right there, we're reading 119 volts on that phase right there. And then if we follow the other phase coming in right here and we put our tester right there and we got 118 volts coming in on that side. And now if we wanted to test across the two phases here, we should have 240 volts. So we put this on each of those terminals and we're reading uh, 238 volts right there, which is uh, just great. Now you can also, you know, test with the meter here. Uh, if you have these breakers on, right? Test from the neutral bar you know, to the lug here on the, the breaker. And then you can test these, turning these on and off and see if you got power coming through those. Uh, likewise here, if you want to test an electrical outlet, I got a, a GFCI outlet set up here and, uh, and we got the AC volt set there and you can poke one lead in here. Uh, the bigger slot on these outlets is, of course, the neutral side, and the smaller one is the uh, line side, the hot side there. So put one lead into one side of the receptacle and then poke the other one into the other side. And, of course, this is uh, one of those tamper-proof uh, outlets there, or I think it's a waterproof type of thing. And let's see if we get a good reading right here. There we go. See, we're getting 119 volts there on this outlet. All right, here I am over at the three-phase panel now, and uh, I'm going to show you the different voltages across uh, these phases right here. So out of the camera frame, I'm actually going to hold this uh, testing lead here, this probe, on the neutral up above. And I just want to show you right here on the A phase here, we're reading 117 volts right there. Right, B phase, we're reading 214 volts, right, from neutral to that phase. And then over here on the C phase from neutral to that phase, we're getting 117 volts. So you can see uh, the difference there between uh, single phase and three phase power there. Uh, we got this higher leg right here, right, measuring, I uh, got 214 volts there. So mainly that higher leg right there is just for running, uh, you know, usually it's industrial equipment, uh, motors, uh, that type of thing. Uh, you don't generally want to power anything from neutral to this phase uh, to get that 120 volts. You want to run uh, neutral uh, to 120 there on this side or neutral to this phase here, but you don't want to run anything from neutral to this phase right here. And to get your uh, 240, you can go across uh, these phases right here. So that's a little bit there about measuring uh, three phase there. Okay, let's uh, click the dial up here a few notches onto the DC here. And I'm gonna put it on uh, 20 volts DC. And what I got here is just a nine volt battery, right? Typical stuff you're measuring uh, with DC voltage is, uh, you know, cars, uh, batteries, uh, that type of thing. So if we take our leads here and we put this onto the nine volt battery, right? And you can see there we are getting 9.63. There you go, right? There's a nice little charge on the nine volt there. All right, here I am out at the Porsche and uh, I'm just gonna put these leads here across the battery here. So I got uh, one here and one here and looks like we're measuring 12.78 DC volts there. All right, now I got the uh, car started up here, and now we're, uh, with the alternator going there, we're generating 14.27 uh, volts there. So uh, all is looking good there on the alternator and the battery. All right, let's uh, click the dial over here a few more turns, and we're gonna go over here uh, to this uh, horseshoe shape right here. And this is the uh, ohms section of the meter here. And uh, you can look up uh, George Ohm there, 
and uh, that's what Ohms is named after. And uh, I'm not, I'm not going to go uh, deep into Ohm's law and that that type of thing. You can look that up and uh, study Ohm's law and electricity and do some calculations there. But that little horseshoe symbol right there is for Ohms. And this is uh, a great handy feature on all these meters here. And uh, this measures ohms, which is also a form of a continuity there. And if you move it right over here, that's just a little uh, speaker symbol there for, uh, for the buzzer. So, right, if I take these two leads right here and I have it on that little uh, buzzer symbol there, that gives you an audible tone right, when you get continuity between two things. So I'm touching these two leads together, right? And that's showing me that uh, the circuit is being uh, completed there. And that's uh, a super handy thing to have, especially when you're trying to track down uh, wires in a wall or a conduit or that type of thing. So I just got a piece of wire here, right? And uh, See, we got the uh, the red and the white here, right? And I want to see if these two are connected on the other end or, you know, for instance, if you're tracing a wire. Say I'm trying to trace this wire through the wall and uh, maybe there's a, a couple reds uh, coming out through some conduit into a box and you're not sure, you know, down the way which wire is which. What you can do is, uh, you know, take the red lead here and choose another wire like the white and put these two together. And you can see there's there's no continuity there, right? It's, uh, you're not reading any ohms there. You're not hearing the sound of the buzzer there, right? So what you can do is down on the other end of this wire, you know, say you're in the electrical box down the way there and we put a wire nut on this end now. And of course, right, now we're gonna get a reading here and you're gonna get an audible tone. And uh, that's just a great way of tracing wires in a wall. There's lots of other methods of doing that, but uh, that's a handy tool right there to have that little audible tone there. Sometimes you can set this up on a wire if you're working by yourself, you know, and have this touch on the wires and then go down to the other box and, uh, you know, start tying some wires together. And then when you hear the tone, uh, you know, you've struck struck gold right there. So, and uh, I also want to say here, like on this uh, fluke meter right here, on this amp clamp meter, this has all these uh, same features on it too. So there's a little ohm symbol right there with a little speaker. And likewise, you, know, you put these together, you get a little uh, audible tone right there. And uh, here's another old school meter that I got right here. And uh, this is the old Volcon here. And uh, you know, this is way out of date now. I don't think anybody uh, uses these much anymore, but it is kind of like a an old reliable uh, voltage tester here. And you can see where we got the uh, 120, 240, 480 on the AC. And then we got DC here on the other side. And this also has a uh, a continuity tester here. So if you tap these two together, you kind of got a loud, audible tone there. And uh, yeah, funny story. I was I was in someone's crawl space, a uh, friend of mine, right? And uh, I was wiring up uh, his father's uh, workshop, and I was down in the crawl space. And I don't know. I think I this is many years back. I'm trying to remember uh, what happened, but I was testing continuity. I, I think across a ground, you know, to a water pipe or something like that. And I had uh, this tester down there and I'm, I'm testing and I'm trying to get continu continuity there. And uh, next thing you know, like through this tester, it was the strangest thing. I started, uh, hearing somebody talking about uh, God and Jesus and uh, I couldn't figure it out. I was like, what, what is going on? Where's that coming from? And, uh, you know, there I was down in this crawl space uh, getting a sermon down there. And uh, oddly enough, this tester here was picking up uh, like a radio wave there, some AM or something right from who knows where. 
And uh, yeah, that was the wildest thing, that this was actually acting as a radio down there in that crawl space. You know, I was uh, getting the message there. <laughs> All right, some other features here in the ohm category is uh, is measuring uh, resistance there. And uh, some practical uses of that is, uh, you know, here's a, another project that I got coming up is uh, putting some in-floor heat in my bathroom, uh, doing a little uh, the steam shower there. Actually, that, that's going to be really good. Uh, but... Right, this is a Schluter system in floor heat. And then when they send you to this, right, they actually uh, want you to check the resistance in this heater wire, right? And uh, they actually give it a little test here and they write down, and you can look here on the sheet, right? The resistance that they've measured on this wire is 56.9 ohms, right? And uh, they want you to test this wire and uh, see if it all checks out and if you're getting a similar reading right there. Because if you're not, you know, you could install this wire and then the heater doesn't work. And uh, that's how heaters work. You got a little bit of uh, resistance in the wire there and that starts to generate heat, right? So if we take these leads here and I set this uh, to 200 on the scale there, right? And then I, I take these two wires, right? And so I got one lead here and one lead here, and we're testing this out, right? And we're getting 57.2 on the scale there, right? And we can, uh, we can dial this up, right? There's 56 right there, right? So this wire, uh, checks out pretty good there. I got the right amount of resistance and uh, right, you're all safe to install that in the floor, you hope, right? Uh, another thing you can test is uh, the resistance in your own body there, right? So if I crank up this meter here, the ohm meter, and uh, this is also a test of uh, how hydrated you are or uh, how dry your skin is too. And so you can, uh, you can test just like this, put your fingers across the leads here, right? And see what your resistance is through your body. And that was some of the things that uh, George Ohm there, uh, the discoverer of uh, Ohm's, that guy was doing all kinds of crazy stuff like, uh, you know, testing electrical current uh, going through his body. And uh, that's how he did these various tests uh, and came up with uh, Ohm's there and Ohm's law was testing current by uh, holding on to uh, two hot wires there. Uh, you know, pretty crazy stuff, right? All right, and just thinking about uh, other crazy stuff there, uh, I'm just thinking about my old electrical trades teacher who was uh, just a great guy. Uh, Joe Breitweiser, he uh, taught electrical trades back in uh, New Jersey there. And just, uh, yeah, just an awesome guy and uh, taught me so much about electric. But he used to uh, put the ohm meter on there and he would measure the resistance in his hands. And uh, he was an older guy and just real dry hands, right? And, uh, you know, barely get any reading there uh, on the meter. And then he'd hand it to one of us students there and we'd grab it, you know, and, you know, with our moist hands there, right? We're getting the, uh, the high reading there. And, uh, but I remember uh, him telling us, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, my skin's so dry. And he's like, you know, back in the day when we used to test electrical boxes, he would tell me that uh, he would put his hand on the edge of the box, right? And then he'd come in and he'd start tapping the wires with his finger and he's telling me that the current is just traveling, you know, right through these fingers uh, right here. And he'd go around and tap the box. And, uh, you know, I've never tried that myself. I don't wanna try it. I don't recommend it to uh, anybody doing that kind of stuff there. But, uh, you know, he was one of the dudes uh, way back in the day there that was running uh, old knob and tube uh, wiring and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, that's just some uh, old school uh, 
uh, nuttiness there. And uh, I'm sure there's a few guys that uh, got thrown across the room from, uh, you know, that method of uh, testing, you know. Never mind uh, using a, a light stick, you know, you know, using your finger. <laughs> Now uh, the memories uh, that brings up just thinking of my old teacher there, uh, old Joe Brightweiser, and uh, I remember the stories him telling us about uh, delivering ice and coal in Hoboken, New Jersey. There, and uh, he go to the different apartment uh, buildings there, and uh, no elevators, and some of those buildings, you know, uh, you know, fifteen stories, and he's like, oh yeah, you know, carrying that coal and carrying that ice uh, up all those stairs. He's like, I'd have to deliver to every apartment there. And uh, I don't know, he was always telling us all kinds of old crazy stories there, but right, just a great guy. Let's uh, switch the dial here. A couple of clicks over to Hertz right here. And uh, Hertz is uh, cycles per second, right? So typically in the US here, uh, the electricity uh, coming through the wires there is uh, 60 cycles per second there. And uh, more this uh, right here, this meter is probably used uh, in cars, right, for as kind of a tachometer. That's how a tachometer works there. And you can measure uh, RPM in a car by measuring it with uh, hertz there. And uh, this particular meter here is uh, reading in uh, kilohertz right and so if we put the lead on here one on the neutral one on the hot we should get about 60 there you know it's going back and forth there between five and six so right that's showing here that we're at 60 uh cycles per second so i'm not going to go into much more detail about that so uh there is the hertz all right the rest of the stuff on this scale here I don't use uh, all that often. The F here, that's for farads there. And that's for uh, measuring uh, capacitors and that type of thing, right? And then uh, we got the amps down here. And I don't use uh, that much either. Uh, I use the amp clamp mostly for measuring amps. And uh, I've seen it happen a few times where, you know, you're measuring amps on this device and you gotta measure in line uh, when you're measuring amps on this. And this is a uh, 20 amp max and uh, you can uh, roast your meter here pretty quick. So I avoid actually using the, the amp meter here. And then uh, HF -E, HFE, uh, that right there is, uh, that's for measuring uh, transistors, uh, little switches and such. So, but another handy feature right here is uh, the temperature probe there. And, uh, right, it comes with this little guy right here, and you can plug that in, right, and move this over to temperature, and it's got a little lead here on the end, and let's see if I just hold this in my fingers here, right, and get the temperature uh, to go up there. Of course, it's red in uh, Celsius there. All right, since I, I don't like using uh, this amp meter here on the multimeter, right, I do like using the amp clamp here, right? And here is one from Fluke, and there's lots of great ones out there. Fluke makes a good one. Uh, Klein makes a great one as well. And uh, so what you do is you turn this dial right here, two amps here with the uh, squiggly line right there, right? AC amps, right? And uh, the trick with this here, I'll take these probes off the back there. The trick with this here is you can't just come in like, see, I got the circuit set up right here, uh, coming out of here through this switch to this bulb right here, right? And uh, so you can't just come in and put this around the wire like that. You got to put it around either the neutral or the hot. If you put it around both together, it cancels uh, the signal out there. So. What this is, it's reading a magnetic uh, frequency around the wire there, and it's giving you a reading on the amps. So if I come to the breaker box right here, and I follow the hot wire off of this breaker that's coming over to this circuit, and I put this clamp on right here, right? So we're reading zero right there. And then if I uh, flip this switch right here, and let's see, I'll 
put my hand over there so it doesn't uh, just flash out the camera there. But see, we're reading 0.1 amps, right? And of course, this is a LED bulb there, so it's reading uh, real low amps there. But right, so we're getting 0.1 amps. All right, so you got a, a, a breaker in the panel or something, right, that keeps uh, tripping, right? It's overloading all the time, you know, and you want to figure out what's doing it right and uh typically the case is right you got old uh grandma georgina's uh old heater here from world war ii right and you're plugging that thing in and it's uh popping the breaker and uh in order to to test that it's good to have a a line splitter so here's a a homemade line splitter right here that i have and what it is it's just like a an extension cord here right without a jacket on it and that enables you to get the clamp here around one wire at a time right so if i plug uh, this into this outlet right here right and then uh let's see i grab uh old uh, grandma georgina's heater here and i plug this in right and then we turn this on and then i put this amp clamp around this one wire right here. All right, so you can see we're reading uh, 10.4 right there. So you can see I can, uh, I'll turn the heater off here, All right? Goes down to zero. I turn the heater back on. All right, so this heater is showing me an amp draw of 10.5, right? All right, so you got, uh, Grandma Georgina's heater cooking there, right? In the bathroom, you're getting all toasty warm there. And uh, let's plug in another device. All right, now you wanna, you wanna dry your hair there, right? So I got, the, I got the hair dryer plugged in here, right? We got Grandma Georgina's heater cranking away there. And uh, so we, let's put the clamp on there, right? So the heater's cranking away and you know, we got 10.5 amps there, right? And see, the thing is, we're running on a, a 15 amp breaker there. So now, right, we uh, turn on the hair dryer. Yeah, maybe I'll run this over here. All right, look at that. We are up to 23.1 amps there. Now, pretty soon, that breaker's gonna trip out there, right? And it's just a matter of time before that gets cooking and it's going to pop that 15 amp breaker. Let's see uh, how long that takes. Aha, uh -huh. right there it goes right there. Now see that, that took a little while there for that uh, 15 amp breaker to pop there. You know, I don't know what that was running there, 30 seconds or so. But, right, there's the typical scenario. So you can test out, you know, the amp draw, you know, on any appliance around the house by using this uh, line splitter right there. Now, another uh, cool thing about this line splitter here, see, I got this coil right here. And what I've done is wrap this around. So there's 10 loops right here. So there's 10 pieces of wire right there. Now let's see, I'll turn this breaker back on. I'll plug in Grandma Georgina's heater, right? And so if we take the amp clamp and we just put it around the regular wire right there, and we're looking uh, right there at 10.4, just wrapped around one wire. But now if I go over and I put this around the 10 wires right there, what that's doing is that's multiplying it. So you can get a... Uh, a more detailed reading right there. So instead of just getting, right, 10.3 right there, now you can look at this right here and uh, you gotta move the decimal over there so it's 10.37 and you can get uh, a more refined reading there on your amp clamp. And that's uh, used technically, uh, you know, more for, uh, you know, motor operation, computers, uh, th that type of thing, more than uh, kind of residential stuff with heaters. But that's a, a way to get a more refined reading. And they do make uh, line splitters 
that you can buy. Like here's one from Klein. And this is the same thing. This is a times 10. And so all that is, is the line that you're reading there. This has a coil of wire that goes around 10 times there. And it's just multiplying the reading so you can get a more refined reading on your uh, amp clamp there. All right, another great little tester to have is this right here. This is a circuit tester and you plug this into a receptacle here. And uh, yeah, these are real cheap, five bucks or, you know, you get this free with a bag of popcorn there, right? And uh, what this has here, it's got some lamps that light up here and it gives you a different coating uh, to tell you what's going on with your circuit there. So the black uh, rectangle, that means uh, that the light is out. So if you have uh, it lit up on the left and on the right, that means you got uh, correct wiring. You know, if you got the middle and the right blacked out there, uh, that means you got the open ground, right? And so on and so forth. So you got uh, reverse polarity, open hot, open neutral, hot and ground reversed, hot on neutral with hot open, right? So I got a uh, GFCI outlet right here. And if I plug this in, you know, it's hard to see right there in the camera but the two outer bulbs are actually lit up there and it's showing that the circuit is correct. And then if you hit this button right here, right? Right, it cuts, uh, trips the GFI and then you know the uh, GFI is working right there. On to the uh, light sticks here. Uh, now this is a, a really great tool to have in the bag and it's also a, a controversial tool to have in the bag there. And uh, in particular there, you can get false readings off of these light sticks. So, but I feel if used correctly, they're incredibly handy and just a good tool to have in the bag there. And uh, as you can see, they come in different styles there. Here's a, a Greenlee right here. And you turn this one on, come in, move this. Yeah, I got this light box open here. And uh, right, we get the flashing light there and a little buzzing as you move it close to the hot wire there. Over on the neutral, right, getting no reading there, but on the hot, right? And then uh, here's a Klein, you know, turn this guy on. This gives you the green light, you know, uh, says uh, no voltage there with the green light. And then as you move it towards the wire, you get the red and you get the beeping there. And then here's an old fluke. Actually, this one's not working, but this used to be uh, one of my favorite little light sticks there, but I think it's corroded inside now. And then uh, here's the uh, uh, old Greenly here, and this has kind of a sensitivity uh, dial on there. And uh, so you can turn this guy on, right? And move this up. Right, and that's showing that that's a hot wire right there. If you dial this back, you know, it's a little less sensitive and you gotta be right up against the wire there uh, to get a reading. And uh, that's a pretty good probe actually. It's nice that it has that uh, sensitivity there, right? This will start to read further out. If you got it on max and see if I dial it down, right where it was once reading and now it's not now you got to move real close right but uh as far as using these uh light sticks safely you know what i like to do is uh you know say i got this one right here right and i'm testing this wire and i hold it up there and to make sure i'm not getting a false reading what i like to do is go over to the breaker or to the switch right and uh Turn that off, you know, I can tell the voltage goes off. Turn it back on, right? I can get in voltage there again. Uh, you know, off, on, off, on. And uh, just kind of ensure yourself that you're getting a real reading there. Sometimes you're in a box and it's loaded with wires, right? And you don't know what you're reading in there, right? There could be, you know, multiple different hots and, you know, you think you turned off the wire, uh, but you really didn't, right? So likewise, you know, you got the switch over here, you know, you hold this up and then turn it on, on and off, right? Yeah, pretty wild. Like I've even seen these uh, pickup readings, you know, 
you know, just holding it close to a light bulb or, you know, I've seen it uh, with fluorescent lights, uh, just holding these even like a foot away from a, uh, a fluorescent light there. And these are, are lighting up, you know, pretty interesting how you can get the false readings on those guys. All right, right on. I hope you guys enjoyed this video here on electrical meters and testers. And uh, hopefully you got some good knowledge there on how to use these. And uh, just a side note here, if you don't feel comfortable working on electrical stuff, uh, it's better best to avoid it. You really got to respect electricity there because it is dangerous, you know. You know, you think you're in, uh, you know, you're going to go wire up something and, uh, you know, next thing you know, uh, the fire department's there with the uh, the hook and ladder there, right, uh, dousing your house down with water. Or, you know, or worse yet, they're, uh, you know, you get electrical shock or uh, electrocution or whatever. So you really just got to respect uh, electricity there because uh, it is powerful. So, uh, and... You know, don't go plugging in uh, Grandma Georgina's heater there with the hair dryer because you're going to trip the circuit, right? Uh, so I'm going to leave you guys today here with a little footage uh, from the whole rainforest. And uh, here's your little moment of zen. All right, right on.